It's back with Bastions. I hope you're well. I hope you're all keeping safe. Um, I'm getting slowly on the mend and I will uh, put out more vlogs over the coming weeks, but it's bear with me because it is going to take time. I'm not 100% and it'll be several weeks before I'm fully recovered. Today I want to talk about vintage uh, Rolex watches and when I mean by vintage Rolex watches I mean watches that were produced in the 80s and 90s not watches produced in the 40s, 50s and 60s. I'll put a link in the description below. John P did a really good vlog um, a while back and uh, he talked about the reasons why not to buy vintage Rolex watches and I sort of disagree with him and uh, he's made some very valid points in that vlog and I do agree with what he says. You know, I do think that the modern day Rolex uh, watches are better made than watches produced in the 80s and 90s. Um, you know, I, I take that point and think it's absolutely correct. Um, I do think that, you know, it's not a reason to buy a vintage watch because they represent a good value because they're considerably cheaper than it is to buy a new modern day Rolex, especially when you can't get your hands on a new modern day Rolex. I mean, let's face facts, even steel date just are trading at about 1,500 to 2,000 pounds more um, than what you can buy from an authorized dealer. And those are ones with very plain, simple dials, you know, not the Wimbledon dial, which is trading even higher. That's not the reason uh, to buy, um, you know, uh, a vintage Rolex. No, I think, Vintage Rolexes have a charm to them that the modern day Rolexes do not, not have. They have a softness to them, whereas the modern day Rolexes have a hardness to them. You know, Rolex really did pump up the designs of their watches. Uh, they Yes, they made them better. They built them with a more modern materials like ceramic. But I just feel they do not have a charm or an elegance that the vintage Rolexes do have. And I'm going to uh, highlight some examples of this over the coming weeks. And I'll start with one today and flip over to it now. Okay, and here we have one I'd like to talk about. I mean, first of all, the outer box is just completely different. Uh, Rolex today would never produce an outer box like that. Um, it's very corporate, you know, we know it's just a sort of cream with the, the embossed uh, crown on it. And a lot of uh, watchmakers are like that, you know, the Amiga outer box is white, uh, Patek uh, outer box is brown and plain. So I think, you know, that in itself, you look at it, quite different, quite funky. Um, comes with all the sort of documents, but even the documents were better produced. You've got a nice wallet, um, I feel. It has, you know, far more of a charm. You don't really get this today. Uh, with the um, the modern um, incarnations of Rolex. It, it just doesn't seem to happen. Um, but really talking about the watch, not the box. But even then, we look at the box and, um, you know, it's actually wooden. I actually think it's better made. And I love this sort of pillow that it's on. But as I said, it's really the watch we're going to look at. And here we have a Datejust 36 millimeter. And... You know, I would sort of disagree a bit with what John P says. I think the case design is very well made on this watch. You know, the 18 carat uh, yellow gold fluted bezel is the dial, the hands, the um, cyclops on the eye, the crown, which is screwed down, uh, the case back. And the movements in Rolex have always been, you know, very solid, robust movements. I mean, let's face facts, they... Uh, Submariner, which was replaced by the uh, sub new, new Submariner in, uh, in 2020, the 41mm variant. The previous movement sat in that for something like 30 years. So, you know, they are solid movements. Where, obviously, um, they've improved them no end is on the bracelets. You know, the new Jubilee bracelets far better made. You can see the band stretches on that. And definitely on, on the clasp. But that is kind of its appeal to me. Um, you know, it has this charm I keep going on about that the new models don't have. And I do think this represents excellent value. You know, a watch like this from a grey market dealer with, um, you know, the box, the papers, and in this condition would cost about £5,000. And you would get at least a 12 month warranty on that watch. And in some instances, 
a 24 month warranty on that watch. And let's face facts, you know, you cannot buy a 36 millimeter two tone date just for £5,000. In fact, you know, you're going to struggle to get your hands on, um, say, an Oyster Perpetual that's below £5,000 from an authorised dealer. And you have to go grey market and they're trading well above list price. And the thing is, these are out there. They're readily available. You can you can choose from a lot of vintage Rolexes from different grey market dealers or even private buyers. It'd be very interesting to see if in 30 years time, we are holding the new modern day Rolex in the same esteem as the vintage Rolexes. If we're saying they have a charm, a romance, an eloquence that the, you know, the watches they replace and don't have today. It'd be very interesting to see that happens. But my advice, if you know, I always say this channel is about value, go and have a look at a vintage Rolex. Stay safe and stay tuned.